If you're looking to set up a home recording studio of your own, I believe this video will be beneficial to you as I go from this room being completely empty to adding acoustic panels, taking measurements with Room EQ Wizard, using Sonarworks for speaker calibration, to try to make this a usable and as good as a place as it can possibly be. Now, nothing is gonna end up being perfect, especially with a room of this size. You're gonna have to make some compromises. A lot of my compromises were just based on the aesthetics of what I wanted this room to feel like. I do believe there are some nuggets that you'll be able to take from this video. So hopefully your acoustic space, no matter what size room you're in, maybe you'll find some benefit along the way. So obviously I'm gonna be playing a lot of guitar, but a lot of that is gonna be direct. And then also I wanna be recording vocals. Outside of that, I would love for this to sound as good as it can possibly sound. So that if I am doing some mixing, I don't have to always rely on using headphones. My first step in this whole process was just to completely remove everything that was in this room. Years ago on YouTube, I've been in different rooms that have been carpeted. I've had a lot of acoustic panels with a lot of foam everywhere. I felt that claustrophobic feeling of everything just seemed so dead. There was just no reverb and that can be so unnatural that if you're recording something like vocals or acoustic guitar, it is nice to have a little bit of ambience. This is why on my Strymon Iridium, they actually have a room knob because they know that when you're recording direct or you're taking all of the ambience out of the room, it just sounds dead and lifeless. So I know that every recording I do in here, though I want it to sound professional, I know that I'm not gonna be able to get away from this sounding independent, this sounding like a home studio. And you probably need to make those compromises as well, or you will literally drive yourself insane trying to get the perfect room. My name's Chris Green. I hope you'll enjoy this video, no matter how lengthy it might be. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and also subscribe if you're looking for more content just like this in the future. You can probably hear from my voice right now. I'm just using my phone, but you can hear there's a lot of reflections in the room. I've just been clearing out all of the gunk and we're just starting from scratch. I know for sure I'm gonna keep this desk in this room. I need to have a desk. So that's a for sure thing. <laughs> These speaker stands that I've got, they're also, I'm, I wanna say these are gonna be a for sure thing. I will do some testing to find out how do the speakers compare when they're just sitting on the desk as opposed to sitting on these stands. These things are crazy heavy. They're basically made out of like cast iron. Super heavy duty. They're meant to do this kind of thing. But again, in this room, how do I make it work? And that's what, that's what I wanna be showing you. First thing I want you to know is that I'm willing to make some compromises and you probably need to be willing to make some compromises as well. You're not gonna see a cloud above me or any acoustic panels on the ceiling because I've got a ceiling fan in here. And for the most part, I'm just looking to get a vocal, maybe some acoustic guitar recorded and everything else that I do is gonna either be direct or I'm gonna be using virtual instruments. I really wanted to have this vinyl floor as uncovered as possible because I like sitting in rolling chairs sometimes. I will make use of some things like rugs on the floor, but that came more as a practical aesthetic decision rather than this being the best acoustical space. Okay, so I've just run a few tests. This room doesn't have any treatment in it at all. I have the Rocket KRK-5s sitting on the desk. I knew that's not gonna be a permanent solution. I just wanna see what's the difference because I also have these speaker stands here which are massive. I got these from Vintage King. They're basically made out of cast iron and you can height adjust. You can also adjust the angle or the tilt of them. So now I'm gonna put the speakers on these stands. Also figured out that basically when I'm sitting in this chair, it's gonna be a rolling chair. I've not had a chair in here for a while, but I sat down to try to measure at the chair's height. Where's my ear at? Where's my listening position? Before I can tell, this is about at 49 inches. So 49 inches off the ground is about where my ear level is. And of course, I'll be sitting a lot closer to the desk. Now what do I need to do? I need to adjust, sorry. I need to adjust these speaker stands. And I'm basically gonna go with the tweeter on these Rocket 5s. I'm gonna set the tweeter so it's right at that 49 inches and see what the results are with that. After I put the speakers on the stands, and of course I need to get my measuring tape out, we're gonna start moving the speaker stands around the room and try to figure out do I need to make an equilateral triangle with the speakers, or maybe just find a good spot and get lucky. So we'll see.
before I was going to use sonar works or using any EQ, I actually wanted to use room EQ wizard with my room measurement microphone to just see what was happening. Every time I added a piece of furniture, every time I added an acoustic panel, what was it doing to the room? So you're going to be seeing a lot of graphs up on the screen and I'll be talking through that journey as well. I had a giant moving blanket that's in my closet and that moving blanket will do a lot of work. It'll take a lot of that decay out of the room. It certainly sounded drier, but that's not something that I wanted to have in this space because when I hung up that moving blanket, it just looks like a moving blanket. So aesthetically, am I going to walk in and just see this giant black curtain everywhere? makes me think too much about acoustics. So if you're sitting down and your setup is just no good and you want to change that, it's good to have adjustments, things that you can do to raise or lower the speakers. Because imagine if you're putting these speakers on your desk, you're pretty much stuck. Now this is a standing desk. It can elevate up and down. That's also a positive. But as far as like just going all out on getting some really rigid speaker stands, you could probably build something very similar. So now the task, I'm not done, but now the task is to find out where the speakers are gonna go in relation to the back wall. Now I've chosen this window wall because aesthetically I just prefer to be facing the window. This isn't gonna be a perfect room by any means, but now I'll take the measuring tape out. We're gonna move these speaker stands around, do some tests, find out how that affects the sound moving forward. So let's check it out. Uh, the first thing is this equilateral triangle idea. So the distance from one tweeter, I'm gonna go based off of the tweeter, but from one tweeter to the next needs to be an equal distance to my listening position. I'm gonna go a little bit behind. I'm gonna go where this boom stand is actually, or this, I'm gonna go where this mic stand is ending right here. So that needs to be an equilateral triangle, or at least that's the theory. So let's try this out. Yeah, speakers are 51 inches apart from each other. So if I were to go 51 inches, that would mean my microphone needs to go back. And that puts me just about at the middle of the room, which is not super great. So I'm gonna move this back. So 51 inches right here. This already just looks like a bad idea. <laughs> and now I've got my monitor in the way. I can move this. So the things I don't like about this when I'm anticipating is that I'm basically sitting in the middle of the room to make this thing work at 51 inches apart. We'll see. probably tell from the graphs that I think things got actually worse. The low end, around 80 hertz. Yeah, around 80 hertz, I am dropped like 20 decibels. There's a 20 decibel drop at about 80 hertz, which 80 hertz, I believe, just off the top of my head, I believe that 80 hertz is the low E on like a bass guitar or a guitar, electric guitar. Uh, that's not good. So 20 decibel, imagine turning every low E string down 20 decibels basically non-existent. So things got worse, and I don't think necessarily it's the equilateral triangle part. I think it's just the fact that if you look at this, I'm directly under the ceiling fan, and the ceiling fan, from what I understand, is the middle of the room. So I don't wanna put my listening position in the middle of the room. Also, this cuts out way too much of my space. You see how close that back wall is? So I wanna push the desk back up against the window, Seemed to be okay. It definitely wasn't, definitely wasn't worse having the desk up against the window, but I need to figure out these speakers. Do they need to go further into the corners? Um, or maybe I can try to wedge them. I can take the speakers and wedge them behind the desk facing this way, maybe. I think I'm gonna be better off widening them out. Uh, might sound a little weird, but I can angle them in, obviously. So let's try that out.
Okay, now the speakers are back as close to the wall as they can be while they're on these speaker stands. I've also got the desk pushed up against the window. I'm gonna do a test and let's just see. When I'm in this space, I wanna feel comfortable and I wanna feel like creating stuff. I don't wanna walk in and necessarily just be thinking, acoustics, problems with low end, you know? So if you go a little too nuts on the scientific method of setting up acoustic panels, you might drive yourself insane. But then as I was putting things in, even if I saw a improvement on the frequency response, if that response or that improvement wasn't noticeable and dramatic, then I could make choices. I could say, well, this will give me a little bit of improvement, but the negative side is this thing looks ugly or this thing, I don't wanna have this thing in my room. So making those choices along the way certainly helped. Okay, so that dip is about at 76 Hertz. The 76 Hertz dip is improving. It was at about 20 decibels down. It's probably at 16, 17 right now. So that was a slight improvement. All in all, I definitely think this gives me a lot more floor space, space to do mixing and recording behind me at the desk. So speaker placement, this might be as good as it gets. I imagine if I put them in the corners, it's just gonna be way too wide. So now the triangle is looking like this. If this is, if my thumbs are where my listening position is, if my triangle is more like this, imagine the stereo image is just gonna be too wide. It's gonna sound kind of quirky or whatever. So right now it's, it's not an equilateral triangle by any means but it's usable in this space. So now my main concern is that 76 Hertz region. How can I make sure that the low end's not canceling out right there? There is no acoustic treatment. There's no acoustic treatment in this room. So I need to figure out, can I get that 76 Hertz back into the room? And then also at 126 Hertz, there's a huge spike. I don't know if those two probably might be related for the same thing, but now it's the fun part because I get to add acoustic treatment to this room. The first thing I actually wanna try out is this big black moving curtain that I have. I wanna hang that up and see what it does, if anything, to the room. Here we go. This looks absolutely terrible. <laughs> But I'm just curious because it's so thick and because it's all like bundled, what does it even do? So let's see if it does anything to the acoustics. So that was surprising. So if anything, I think things got worse. Now you can hear with them. As I'm talking, what I do think changed was definitely the decay or the reverb in the room. Definitely doesn't sound like I'm in an aluminum can as much. Test, test one, two. There's still some liveliness to the room, but this big thing, I don't know if it's worth it. Um, let me put this on. I've got a few screws in the wall. It's directly opposite of the mixing position. So on the back wall here, let me hang it up there and just see what happens. Again, it just looks terrible, but let's see. For the amount of space and what this thing is doing in the room, again, I really, I like the fact that it doesn't sound as lively in the room as it did earlier, but when I put up acoustic panels, I'm going to be getting the similar effect. So maybe this moving blanket is giving more of a perceived help in the room, but as far as that low end information, 76 Hertz, 120 Hertz or so, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, which is about everything I've heard from YouTubers and all that kind of stuff. So what do I wanna do now? Put this thing back in the closet because it's just an eyesore. <laughs> I've got plenty of acoustic panels that I'll show you in just a minute. And we're gonna try those out. I know for sure those are gonna be hung up in the room or at least in the room, but we'll talk about that in just a second. I'm pretty sure that most of the studios that you envy 
have something to do with the aesthetics of them because when we're creative people and we're looking to record something and to be creative, we really don't want to be in this room just full of foam, right? Before I get the acoustic panels, I've got this other kind of like quilt fabric. And I'm just curious about this because I just watched a video. One of the YouTubers was talking about how the carpet, literally if the carpet is a quarter of an inch or thinner, it basically only has effects up in like the thousand hertz region. It won't do anything for the low end. So I'm just gonna lay this on the floor, just as an example. Of course, I don't want this long-term, but I'm gonna stretch this out over this vinyl flooring. And let me see what that does to the room. From what the graph is showing me, it looks like in the upper mids, like getting into the crispy, like 1K region, it does seem to be taking a lot of those peaks and valleys and it's making them at least more consistent. This room's never gonna be perfect, but it has somewhat of an impact. Definitely, if you have some sort of carpet or whatever, it's not doing as much as the moving blanket did. If you can just tell from the way that I sound when I'm talking, the reverb time is still a lot higher than when I had that moving blanket hanging up. But at this point, this is an aesthetic decision. I really don't like carpet or rugs, especially when you have a rolling chair. So if it's not making a dramatic difference in the room, I'd rather go with the acoustic panels that are gonna be on the wall, out of the way, put those up and see if they give me similar results. And if they give me similar results, then I don't need to go putting carpet or rugs in here. So these are my home-built acoustic panels. And just so you have an idea what's going on with these on the inside, there's basically a wooden frame that the Roxel insulation is sitting in. Okay, so these are two inches of insulation and the entire panel is probably about three inches wide. It just has command strips because these have hung up in many different places. This was in Lowe's, basically a hardware store. You can go get something that's meant for laundry room organization. And I put this hanger on it because on these doors, these are flimsy interior doors. They're hollow, they shake, they rattle. That can definitely cause some problems, but because I have these doors on my back wall, I know that I'm not gonna be doing a lot, I'm not going to, I know that because these doors are in the corner, I'm not gonna be able to put any like base trapping on the walls here, or I won't be able to open and close the door. Now, something could go up in the top corners. There's enough room up there for me to put something in the future, but hopefully we don't have to do that. But, <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna hang these up on the doors and let's see how that contributes. Okay, so the two panels are now hanging and I guess the neat part, this just kind of comes with the territory, is because they're hanging up on this wire that's got basically a screw at the top of the door holding them in, there is a little bit of an air gap and they are at an angle. Let's do a test now. Let's see what that does. Okay, so little by little, the uh, 120 hertz region seems like there is a little bit of this peak just kind of broadened a little bit, which is plenty fine. Let's see where we're gonna move from here. I do need to figure out what to do about these corners. So my first thought was I would take two of my acoustic panels and stack them on top of each other up in the corners and kind of wedge these and see what it does to the low end. All right, so now we've got two panels back on the doors and I've got this janky looking uh, painter's tape holding up these acoustic panels in the corners. They don't quite reach all the way to the top, so that might be a problem, but we'll deal with that later perhaps. Let's see what that does. All 
All right, of everything I've tried so far, that seemed to have the most dramatic result. Again, it's so subtle. I feel like I basically need to cover the entire window here to get the results I'm looking for, but it sounds better. I just need to think about now, how can I secure these things so they don't just go falling on me if I'm sitting here mixing or anything like that. So I'm putting some thought into that. And then one thing that you might be wondering is addressing these first reflection points. So when I'm sitting in the mix position, right here, one of the tricks you can do is take a mirror and walk alongside the wall. And basically everywhere you see the speaker cone, you wanna put a panel. Now, I don't think I have enough panels to address every possible reflection point that's in this room, but it would be a start. So I'm gonna go grab a mirror and I'm gonna find these reflection points and let's possibly hang a panel and see what happens. Had a bunch of these aluminum brackets left over. And so what I used them for is basically to create a reverse hinge on these two panels. So the two panels in each of the corners, they are bracketed together kind of vertically so that as long as they're not, you know, if I go up to these panels and I give a pull on them, of course they're gonna fall. But the way that they fall out is they kind of bend toward the wall. So the likelihood of me just sitting here and the panels falling on themselves, uh, I don't wanna say impossible, but basically what it allows me to do is I've got one big panel now that instead of it being a four foot panel, it's eight foot panels and they're kind of leaning into the corner again. Um, I'm not really good about poking holes in walls. I've got a bad history of doing a lot of damage to drywall. So I really don't wanna do any damages to these walls, but it is time to handle the first reflection. So I'm gonna get that mirror as I was talking about earlier and look at hanging these two last remaining panels, putting them on the sides. As you'll hear also with my smartphone, you can probably just hear how my voice is changing from what sounds like just being in an aluminum tube to it starts to deaden a little bit. But again, I'm not trying to make this a dead space. I want it to be useful for recording. Okay, so I had some help from Lana. She came in here and held the mirror. And basically to find the first points of reflection from the speakers, what she did was she started off about here and held the mirror about ear level to where I'm gonna be seated. And she moved down the wall and right about here where the tape is, she could actually see the yellow, I could see the yellow speaker cone. So I was seated in the listening position. She's holding the mirror. She moves down the, law, the wall. The first major reflection right here. And then of course, right back here was yet another one. Problem is I only have two panels remaining. So I need to figure out, am I going to try and mount one here? and then one also on the opposite wall, or do I need to mount one here? My gut is telling me that this spot right here is way more in line with the speaker, but the space in between the listening position is right here. So as far as when I'm sitting at the listening position, my left and right is immediately right here. I probably should go with that, but a way I can test it before I hang any panels is to take my remaining panels. I'm just gonna have them seated on the floor about in the area that I'm gonna hang them, which again is in line with where my head's gonna be on either side of the room. And then I'm gonna test it to see what that's like. So basically I have two panels left. I've got one situated right here just leaning up against the wall for now to see if that has any impact and the other one's on the other side. So now I wanna do a test. Instead of them being at the first piece of tape, I'm gonna try moving them to the second piece. Let's see how that does. I do have two small square panels. 
So what I'm wondering is the square panels, they're really meant for more of like a drum booth situation. They're not the same size at all. But perhaps what I can do is take these panels, which more than likely they need to be mounted. I'm gonna mount them, try to leave maybe two thirds of the space above the panel, one third below. I don't wanna mount the panels exactly halfway up the wall, I don't think. Really not sure. My gut is telling me since I'm in the seated position, better for the panels to be about this level rather than hanging them at this level. That's what my gut is telling me. I think I need to go ahead and mount these. And then if I'm still having problems for the closest points, which are basically this point here, what I'll attempt to do is put the square panel. So aesthetically, it'd probably look better if I had four of the square panels. So it will be roughly the size of my four foot panels here. But as with everything, we need to try. Now, this is the first time that I'm actually going to be mounting these on a wall. So first thing I need to do is in relation to where Lana put the pieces of tape, I need to find studs. And if I can find the closest stud, I need to decide how high is this going to be. I think since my listening position is like 49 inches, I need the middle of my panel to be 49 inches high. So if it's a four foot panel, I want two feet above that 49 inches and two feet below the 49 inches. Interestingly enough, these panels are right at like 48, 49 inches. I'm just gonna round, okay? So if the panels are 49 inches, I need the middle of the panel to be right at 49 inches. What I did was I did 49 divided by two and then times three. And that times three is giving me, this is where for the bracket, to fit on the screw, I need my screw to be about 70, I think it was 73 and a half inches above the floor. So if I hang this up at 73 and a half inches, then the middle of the panel should be right at 49 inches. Now it's just a matter of, I need to find a stud, which for me is like, finding a stud is the hardest thing ever. <laughs> but we'll see. I've got this stud finder from Stanley. I don't know if I'm just using it improperly, but it's never seemed to be spot on for me. It gets me close enough, but I'm gonna use this picture hanging nail just to find, am I at the right spot? And then I'll use a larger screw. Two tries. <laughs> I did find a stud, so that's great. Again, this screw is gonna go up 73 and a half inches. Okay, so what we have now, we have each panel on the second point of reflection. Again, I've got these square panels meant for like drum booth stuff. They probably won't handle more than like high frequencies, but my thought is I could possibly hang them. Okay, so Rumi Q Wizard is telling me not a lot is changing with the frequencies. Now these absorbers are two inches of insulation with some wood on the outside and fabric. I can tell, and you can probably tell just me talking into the phone camera microphone, you can probably tell that my voice sounds a lot cleaner as not as much. I would definitely say this doesn't sound like an aluminum tank right now but I am not super impressed with the acoustic panels on the sides. They will probably stay maybe more just for aesthetic reasons, but let me go get the other two panels because as far as acoustic treatment goes, that's pretty much all I've got. I am gonna grab a little carpet square. It's not a thick rug at all, and this is purely just an aesthetic thing, but it's big enough that it'll fit in the back of the room on the floor. So if I'm recording acoustic guitar or if Lana's singing something in the back of the room, just something soft to stand on. It's very thin. So I don't expect that to make much of a difference, but I'll go grab that first. All right, so now with this little carpet square, it's about maybe a five foot, five foot by three foot, you know, 
this thin. Just meant to hold drums from sliding around, but let's do a test with that and see what it does. All right, this area rug, like I was thinking anyway, doesn't make any difference as far as the frequency response of the microphone. And I just want to say that it's not all about the frequency response of the room. There's also a feeling in this room of, like I said before, it sounds like I'm in an aluminum tank. The more stuff that's being added, it sounds a lot drier. And I was telling my wife this earlier with the moving blanket that was hanging up earlier. Aesthetically, it just looks terrible, but it did make a difference as far as like if I clap my hands or me just speaking to you in the microphone, it sounds a lot more direct. It, I believe that what it's doing is it's removing some of that decay time, that reverb that is not very satisfying sounding. And the thing that I don't want, I actually don't want to remove reverb. I want this to be a lively space because even when you're listening to music or whatever, you don't want to be like in this cotton ball of a room. For one, it makes it very hot, but it sounds almost too unnatural. I do want it to be able to be direct. So me talking to you on the phone, it's totally worth it to have some absorption in here. But I can definitely tell that without proper, you know, tube traps or something more significant in this room, I'm not going to be able to address some of these giant peaks and valleys that you're seeing as we go along. This carpet rug thing really didn't make a difference on the frequency response but aesthetically speaking it's going to make a difference for me that even when i'm recording guitar or something i want this space to look nice so there's aesthetic pros and cons with everything i can still use my rolling chair to a certain extent i still have the ability to move around on this laminate but yes the uh rug thing not really making much of a difference at all it's very thin all right, so funny enough, the last acoustic panel I put up, this one over here, I actually found three, the three screws I put in immediately went into studs and that's never, never happens to me. But basically these panels here, I put two screws on the bottom, basically like a shelf for them to sit on. And then on the back of the panels, there's a clear Sonic logo. And I used a pair of scissors just to cut a little slit. So a screw that I've got in the wall, clear Sonic logo kind of, grabs and that'll keep it from falling off the wall like that and did the same thing on the other side. So good news is got a bunch of stuff hung today. Bad news would be I don't have any more like acoustic treatment or traditional acoustic treatment to be using. So just to recap, we got the ones in the corners here. That's about eight feet up. Still got a big gap up there. Maybe I could put a pillow or something. I've got the first reflection points, which are these clear sonic, you know, it's the same stuff they use in drum booths or whatever. Probably not gonna be absorbing a whole lot, might just make it sound deader. And then I've got these panels on the second reflection point. And then on the doors in the back, I've got two panels hanging up here. I feel like this wall space needs to have something that could just be, uh, where the guitar rack goes. I know a lot of the energy is gonna be going back that way, but typically what I've seen is in this kind of situation where I'm trying to use it as a tracking room and a mixing room at the same time, that I don't wanna put so much absorption in here that it just soaks up all the lively sound like I've been talking about. So for now, these are just bare, but I could see hanging something on the back. A diffuser in this kind of room, this room being 12 feet long, 11 feet deep, I guess. And then uh, we are, what are the measurements? I believe it's nine feet ceilings, nine foot ceilings, 12 feet long ways, 11 feet short ways. And the only reason I'm setting this up, it's not that big of a difference between the 12 foot length and the 11 foot length, but we have this big window and then I've got two doors on the back. So I like the symmetry of just facing the window and that being what it is. So let me do another test, see what we're working with. All right, that's probably all for today. I am gonna to be uh, tomorrow adding in this graphic equalizer. 
So the Graphic EQ, the great thing about it is I can very specifically pinpoint certain frequencies and then boost or cut them. And this one has two channels, so I can have one going to my left speaker, one going to the right speaker. The idea would be that this is always on, and since it's always on, it's always filtering my speakers to let me get the best results out of the room that I possibly can. Don't know if it'll make it in the final cut, but I do wanna play around with this thing, just don't have the time to do it today. Maybe this will help me when it comes to that 70 hertz, the 120, 120 hertz for sure. We should be able to cut that, see what it does to the rest of the response in the room. And then maybe this can be something that stays on permanently. All right, so I'm back in the room and things have changed quite a bit. I'm gonna turn the camera around because this room is now full of everything I've got. As I'm doing the measurements, I was really glad that I went through and checked as I added each piece of acoustic treatment. I was just watching a video last night and basically the conclusion was, unless you've got at least six inches of thickness on your absorption, you're really not gonna be able to do anything about those low end frequencies. Again, unless you just cover this whole place, every square inch of it with some sort of treatment. This is the only treatment that I have. So I figured why not just go ahead and put all my gear, everything that's in the room that's gonna be in the room long-term. Let's go ahead and put it in there and see what happens. Again, I have to make decisions that are not only for the sound, but also aesthetically pleasing. So I do a lot of YouTube videos in this room and I want it to look nice, but you're also gonna see things that are gonna obviously affect reflections and might cause problems. Those are things that I'm just gonna have to deal with now that it's time to EQ the room. So I'm gonna flip the camera around, kind of give you a once over the entire room to see what I've got. And then I'm gonna do a measurement to see how all this stuff is affecting their overall sound coming out of the speakers. All right, so uh, thrown in the graphic equalizer. It's there under my desk. The settings basically were determined by using Room EQ Wizard. It gave me a frequency readout. Every time I was running the test, I tried to stand in the back of the room over here by this reflection filter, I'm trying to be consistent. Although literally, if you just like move your head to one side or another, it can drastically affect the measurement, but I'm very pleased with where the EQ curve is at right now. So now I'm gonna boot up Sonarworks, which is the speaker calibration software. It's gonna do a much more extensive kind of search around the room. You'll be able to see, I'll be moving the microphone around. It'll ping a bunch of stuff. What it's neat for is because you're moving the microphone around so much in the room, it tries to EQ your speakers so that you don't have to be the exact millimeter spot where you initially measured it. So I can move to the left or the right. I can move all around the room and the EQ curve should be averaged out no matter where I am. So that's the next step. A few things that did change in the long run, I don't have the boom arm with the SM7. I am using this small diaphragm condenser mic to do these videos. Again, that came back to aesthetics. I know that the SM7 is very common on YouTube. You're probably gonna see the SM7 a lot in my videos, but I felt a lot freer just to not have that in my face. I've got the small diaphragm condenser just tucked away behind my monitor, poking out a little bit. Yes, you're gonna hear more of the room. It's not gonna be as direct as having the SM7. But again, I just like sitting at the desk and having this space be as open as possible so I can play guitar and not be hindered so much by one of these giant 
boom arms with an SM7 on it. The only other thing that changed is I also put a little bit of a filter over part of this window. So when I was doing a video, basically the sun was so bright that you probably even see it in this video, it's covering up my glasses whenever I have glare coming off of my frames. Purely just for the sake of YouTube, when I'm doing any real mixing, anything like that, I can remove that filter off of the window and I can look outside and know that I'm not trapped in some metal scientific box. If you're into recording or you have your own home studio, I'm very interested and I love watching videos where people are setting up their studios as well. So be sure to leave me a comment, maybe even a link to a video if you've made a video of your studio tour. There are a few YouTubers out there that particularly want to shout out. One is Eric Valentine. Now, if you watch Eric Valentine's video where he's building his dream studio at his barn, um, just know that some things are a little bit out of reach. And for you, that may come later in life, but still, it's very neat to see him go through this thorough process of setting up a really cool recording setup. Andrew Masters also, most of his channel, though it is on music production and recording, he does a lot of studio tours. So Andrew Masters will go around and interview people and he'll check out their own home studios, whether they be in a basement or a garden in their backyard, it's just cool to see things like that. And then also a new one for me is called Acoustic Insider. Acoustic Insider is purely what it sounds like. He's talking about acoustic panels and anomalies that happen in small bedrooms. You wanna check out those channels as well if you're interested in home studio setups. This video is quite long and thorough, but I really appreciate you watching and I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and join me as we make some more music here on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Chris Green, I'll see you next time.